Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum everyone. My name is Khalisah and I am from Singapore. I run Live From Liz on Instagram where I share Ramadan reminders and tips under the hashtag Ramadan with Liz. Before I begin, I want to say Jazakunallah khair to the Um Fariha Network, to Sister Zahra, Sister Toiba, and the entire team for inviting me to speak in this year's 30 Women, 30 Days of Ramadan. It is actually a very huge um, honor for me. I'm really excited and uh, I truly hope that whatever I share in this video, inshallah, can benefit people even in the slightest bit, inshallah. Just want to share a little bit about Ramadan with Liz, what I do on Left From Liz. Uh, basically, I share Ramadan reminders and tips uh, on Instagram about five to six months before Ramadan so that uh, we can all prepare for Ramadan way early. We can slowly get into the Ramadan mode and I feel that after doing it for a few years, it has been a very rewarding experience, especially when you can witness people who truly try their best to really improve, to really prepare for Ramadan. And when Ramadan comes, they really give their best. They will update me on their milestones. And I feel that it is a beautiful thing how all of us are always trying our best to be better in Ramadan. And that makes Ramadan even more special for me when I can share Ramadan with all of you, when I can experience Ramadan with my community on Instagram. So Alhamdulillah for this uh, opportunity to be able to share on this platform for this year's Ramadan. So today already marks day 17 of Ramadan, MashaAllah. Um, personally for me, this Ramadan has been very very different but no less amazing mashallah I feel that this year because of the pandemic all of us are to stay home so for us in Singapore we are under circuit breaker where we are supposed to stay home and we can only leave home for food or groceries only so most of the time I am at home and for the first time in four years I am able to spend my Ramadan at home with my family because I work in a local mosque and every Ramadan I would have to be on duty on some nights uh, for iftar and for taraweh prayers so this year mashallah with this pandemic there is wisdom for me because I am able to stay home I am able to spend the entirety of Ramadan at home with my family which is actually a chance that I am blessed with Otherwise, I can only count the number of days that I am able to spend Ramadan with my family at home. So, Alhamdulillah, this is one of the blessings that I can reflect on uh, in this year's Ramadan. But also, due to the pandemic, I want to highlight that it might not be an easy Ramadan for anyone at all this year. It might be difficult for everyone to experience Ramadan this year, especially those who are affected by the pandemic, those who are away from their family, those who do not have enough uh, to even have food on their table every night. So let us just take this moment to say Alhamdulillah for all the blessings that we have, that we are actually healthy enough to be able to fast during Ramadan, that we actually are safe in our homes even though we don't get to go out like normal that we have food on the table every night for iftar that our family is with us and that we have a shelter over our heads because not everyone have this nikmah in this ramadan not everyone is safe not everyone is with their family so if you are one of the lucky ones who are able to experience all this let us take some moment to say Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah and Alhamdulillah for all these blessings that Allah has given us. In the midst of this pandemic, I know it may seem very, very bleak for many of us. There are a lot of uh, uncertainties, there are a lot of um, difficulties for everyone. We are all facing different difficulties, but inshallah, in due time, we will understand and we can see the hikmah in Allah's plans because ultimately Allah only gives the best for his servants 
and as Muslims and as striving mu'mins, we always try to see the good in every situation, right? So inshallah, let us always try to make the best of every situation. And for this year's Ramadan, whatever left of it, uh, let us try our best to continue to strive and make it the best Ramadan yet for all of us, inshallah. One thing about this year's Ramadan, we are all at home. So for me, I am working from home. Uh, and I also understand that many of my friends and families, they are also working from home. Their children are schooling from home. Um, everything is happening from home. And mashallah, uh, when you have to deal with all these things at home, you also have to prepare for iftar. You also join in for tarawih prayers. You also stand up for tahajud, and then you wake up for sahur. So, and the routine repeats. And mashallah, I feel that it is truly a handful, especially for mothers out there who have to juggle every single thing at home every single day. So, truly, that is really an amazing feat, and. May Allah reward everyone out there who is trying their best to just survive this moment, to just survive this period. I mean, uh, not only we are not certain and we are trying to understand all the differences and all the uncertainties that is happening around the world, we are also trying our best to strive for Ramadan. So that must be extra tiring, extra exhausting. So, in today's video, I would like to address this thing about being tired, about being exhausted. Um, in this second half of Ramadan, I just want to say that if you feel really, really exhausted from all that you have been doing for the past month, for the entire uh, lockdown period, I just want to say that it is just very human to feel like this. I mean, we are trying to make sense of what's going on in the world and everything keeps on changing. And it, it, it always feels very negative when we understand that the world is not getting better anytime soon. So, if you are feeling very negative about the entire thing, if you are feeling um, really, really sudden or really tired, I just want to let you know that it is okay. It is very human to feel that way and that you are not less of a striving Muslim in Ramadan if you feel that way. And because of that, in this video, I want to share five things that inshallah we can practice to help us continue to strive until the last day of Ramadan. I mean, at this point, I'm sure many of us are exhausted, me included, and I know many others are also exhausted. So just by sharing these five things, um, it might not save everyone, but I just want to share so that perhaps we can take, we can benefit from it and inshallah we can um, help ourselves to push ourselves a little bit more till the, till the last day of Ramadan inshallah. So the first thing that I want to share with you is uh, to refuel ourselves with du'a. Refuel ourselves with du'a, what I mean is that we actually take some time to reconnect back with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maybe in our strife for this entire Ramadan, we are trying to make everything else work. We are trying to always uh, keep up with the housework, we are trying to keep up with our work at home, we are trying to take care of the kids, we are trying to make sure everyone has food and everything. So perhaps sometimes we lose the connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we lose it in the midst of our busyness in our days and then the busyness and our tightness at night. So perhaps we can just stop for a moment, take 5 to 10 minutes of your day today, just sit down and clear your mind and just reflect on your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I know it might be very tiring for all of us right now. So just sit down and just talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can just raise your hands and just ask Allah to lift up your struggles, to ease your affairs, 
to be specific in your du'as that Allah help you and is it for you to strive for the end of Ramadan. If it is very difficult, you can just ask Allah to ease all your burdens, to leave all your struggles and to reward you in your adversity, to grant you patience and strength. It is akin to putting your trust to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's as though you are saying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, please leave my worry and my distress. I don't have any power over myself because la hawla wa la quwata illa billah. There is no power nor might except in you, Ya Allah. So only you can help me. Only you can ease my burdens for me. Only you can ease my affairs for me. And only you can make me safe. And only you can help me strive to be better in your path. In these final days of Ramadan, I mean, we are more than halfway through Ramadan. We don't want to waste the other half of Ramadan, right? So, inshallah, just by making dua from your heart, Allah listens to you, Allah hears you, and Allah will respond to your dua. Do not feel disheartened if if you have been making dua throughout this Ramadan and Allah has not been answering you because perhaps He is answering you in another way, not the way that you are expecting, but instead in His own way. So have trust in Allah, have full yakin when you make dua because making dua is communicating with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly, especially in your heart. So, make du'a from your heart, make sincere and focus du'as to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and may Allah grant our du'as, may Allah make it easy for us to strive till the end of Ramadan, inshallah. And the next thing, um, after we make du'a, after we acknowledge that we have no power over anything at all and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who has power over everything, we leave it to him. It is as though we tell Allah, Allah, you take all my worries away and let me believe and understand that inshallah, I can make it, I can make it through till the end of Ramadan. So once you are, you have that understanding, once you have that belief in Allah, I am sure we might feel a little bit better because we know that Allah is there. Allah hears us. So... Inshallah, we will be okay. So the next thing I want you to do is to renew your intentions. I'm sure that you understand that all our actions are rewarded through our intentions. So right now, I want you to recall back what is your intentions for all the actions that you have been doing in Ramadan. We don't want to miss out on any blessings at all in Ramadan. So let's renew back our intentions in our... Um, exhaustion in our burnt out please remember that at the end of the day we are doing everything for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only we are not here to please anyone there is no one greater than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are only here to seek for his pleasure in every single thing that we do be it for our family be it for our work be it for ourselves we are not trying to prove to anyone anything we just want to get Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure and we are doing everything for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake so right now recall back and remember your intentions that you are doing every single thing for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so when things get difficult when it gets really hard sometimes we are not appreciated for what we do Always remember that Allah is a shakur. Allah appreciates you so much for all the things that you do, even the very smallest thing. So, remember that Allah SWT is all-knowing. Even the smallest things that you do for Allah SWT will not go unrecorded, will not go unknown by Allah SWT. It is being acknowledged by Allah. All the angels are writing every single thing. So always have the belief and the knowledge that Allah knows and Allah sees. And inshallah, Allah will accept all our deeds. May Allah accept all our deeds in this Ramadan and beyond. And may this month truly be a month of barakah and blessings for all of us. And the next uh, thing that I wanted to share is about reassessing our blessings. So in every single difficult situation, there will bound to be hikmah. There will bound to be wisdom because ultimately Allah only wants the best for all of us. So when we are in a difficult situation like this, when we are feeling very exhausted, when there are so many uncertainties, especially about 
the lockdowns and everything we have to understand that we are still very very blessed there are a lot of things that we can be grateful for that's why we have to change our mindset to become more positive so that we can continue moving forward every single day with more strength and positivity and not stumped by negativity and not feel very down and very low about everything around us so right now i just want you to take five minutes or less than that just run through certain things certain blessings that you are blessed with what are the things that you are blessed with as for me as i mentioned i am blessed with my family i am able to spend the entirety of ramadan with my family and that is truly a huge blessing for me i would have never thought i could have the entire ramadan with my family not just at night but in the day in the afternoon 24 7 at home with my family in the entirety of ramadan so that is truly a blessing for me especially so so what are the blessings that you have see alhamdulillah for even the smallest things for our health for our iman this ramadan and it is truly actually a very big blessing to even meet ramadan this year many of us many of our friends and family might not have met ramadan this year because they pass away they are not on the deen anymore there are a lot of reasons how people cannot meet with ramadan this year but alhamdulillah we are in ramadan and we are more than halfway through ramadan so alhamdulillah for every single thing let us reassess our situation let us change our mindset to more positive uh, outlook and let us be grateful for the blessings alhamdulillah next i want to talk about reviewing our goals so perhaps before ramadan we prior to ramadan we would already have ramadan goals that we want to achieve uh, as for me i am very big on goals uh, i make sure that before i start ramadan i already know specifically what i want to achieve so for this year inshallah i wanted to achieve certain things and uh, perhaps it has become a little bit difficult for me uh, because i'm working from home and there are a lot of things to juggle so this this is also a reminder for me when we are reviewing our goals i want you to reassess your situation and when you review your goals it does not mean that you just scrap them off your list but instead you change your goals you tweak them a little bit so that it can fit your situation right now it can fit whatever that you can do within your means right now it does not mean that okay i am not feeling really good um i'm just exhausted so it is okay if i just scrap like two goals off my list so i only have to like deal with one no it doesn't work that way i still want you to understand that you should strive your best to achieve all your goals that you have planned for this ramadan and just a small leeway we can just tweak them and change it to suit our situation right now so that inshallah we can still achieve them even in our uh, limited capability even in our difficult situation even in our exhaustion we are still able to achieve them and we are able to see at the end of ramadan alhamdulillah i am able to achieve all these goals and then it can be a constant motivation and inspiration for you throughout your life and maybe perhaps next ramadan when we meet ramadan again we can recall back this moment and maybe we can aim for something more than what we have achieved this ramadan inshallah and finally, the last thing that I want to share with you is about striving to do our best. There is this book that I read. It is called Unbreakable by Ayman Azlan, a Malaysian author. Uh, basically, he talked about the 85% rule in his book, which I thought that it was very, very inspiring. And it truly makes a lot of sense to me because we are only human and as human we have the tendency to want to have perfection in everything and also within ourselves so when we set our goals naturally we will think that i have to achieve every single thing on my list i have to achieve 100 percent of my goals i have to be the best because i already set these goals but when i read this 85 percent rule i realized that as human we have flaws and and that we cannot run away from it and we should not beat ourselves up when we are not able to achieve our goals so i just want to share an excerpt from the book where Ayman Azan says that 
um, it is not impossible to to reach 100% of your goals but 85% is a more realistic number uh, it is a number that is neither too low nor too high it is a number that speaks excellence but at the same time it celebrates the weaknesses the flaws the imperfections of the person striving for their excellence 85% is humble in its realization that we are who we are we are human beings that need help who cannot do it by themselves, who need time to improve, and 85% is what we should aim for. And I totally agree with him. I mean, sometimes we are not able to achieve everything we do, and then because of that, we feel more demoralized, and we feel like perhaps you are never good enough to achieve good things in life. So when we apply this rule in our lives, when we apply the 85% rule, it is the understanding that we achieve 85% of our goal. So, for example, I want to uh, read the entirety of Quran and Khatam once before Ramadan ends. But I only managed to reach until maybe um, Juzuk 27. And that is enough. That is almost 85%. And that is, mashallah, very, very good effort already. So, do not beat yourself up when you cannot achieve entirety of your goals but even if you reach 85% that is already perfect and that is the best that you can do but for those who are not even able to reach 85% I just want you to know that you are no less than a winner this is not a competition it is just Ramadan is mashallah a journey where we learn about ourselves too so it is okay if you don't even reach 85% but I just want you to know that you don't have to reach 100% and that whatever percentage that you reach in your goals this year I just want you to know that you are doing very amazing and that Allah rewards you in all your intentions and all your actions so don't belittle even the smallest, smallest efforts that you have. Don't look down on yourself. I want you to know that you are enough and all your efforts are valid and none of it will go unnoticed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Before I end, I also want to talk about um, one quote from Aida Azlin that uh, I've always kept with myself. It is... The quote is that we always do things better the second time around. So as a personal reflection for me, we are already in the second half of Ramadan. We already go through the first half of Ramadan. So like we already understood the struggles, the routine. And as of right now, if we put aside our uh, exhaustion, if we put aside all our difficulties and realize that we only have less than half of Ramadan left, and this is the best part of Ramadan, the last 10 nights of Ramadan, where we can strive to get Laylatul Qadr, where we can totally submit ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because what if we don't meet this anymore? What if we don't have the chance to meet Ramadan anymore in our lives? What if this is our final Ramadan in this world? So let's just do better. We already know what is in store for us in the first half of Ramadan. We only understand we already understand the routine that we have to go through every day. So inshallah, we take this time to reassess ourselves to go through the five things that I told you about. And we try to do better in the second half of Ramadan because we always we always do things better the second time around, right? Like Aida Azlin said. So I always keep this quote with me, uh, especially in Ramadan because it makes me feel empowered and makes me inspired to do better in the second half of Ramadan no matter what mistakes that you have done in the first half of Ramadan no matter if you haven't been able to do anything at all in the first half of Ramadan please know that this is actually another chance for you to do better in the second half of Ramadan especially in the final 10 nights of Ramadan so let's all take this chance and don't let it go to waste and let us do our best in this coming um, half of Ramadan especially in the last 10 nights of Ramadan before I and I also want to say that actually all the things that I've mentioned are things that you already know and sometimes when we when we are in difficult situations when we feel exhausted and tired we just want to give up sometimes we just need to hear the things 
from other people. We just need to hear these reminders. But actually, deep down, we already know it in ourselves. So I just want you to know that you know all of this already. I am here just to remind you of all of this so that we can all strive together. Sometimes we just need to hear it from someone else, you know. So if you need it to hear it from someone else, this is me telling you about all of this so that we can all strive better for the second half of Ramadan, inshallah. I hope uh, this video has been truly beneficial for you. Uh, please make dua for me. Uh, and um, I am truly grateful for this opportunity to share on this platform. Inshallah, may this Ramadan be the most blessed for us. And may Allah always keep us safe in this uh, period, especially in this pandemic. Um, uh, thank you for tuning in. And Assalamualaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.